Note that on the factory pressure test kit, side A has an air valve and side B has a pressure gauge. Inspect the gaskets and then tighten the unions onto the supply and return manifolds. You can fill the system with air or water through side A. If you're filling with water, leave the drain valve on side B open until water comes out. Close the valve and fill the system until the zone is pressurized to a maximum of 100 PSI. Do not use water if freezing conditions are likely. If you're testing with air, close the valve on side B and pressurize side A no greater than 100 PSI. This test should be applied for 24 hours and should remain during any concrete pour. Overnight, cooler temperatures may cause a 10% drop in pressure. If your pressure drop exceeds 15%, spray a soapy solution on all connections and look for a leak. If you still can't find one, Make sure the pressure is set at 100 PSI and walk along all the tubing circuits until you find the problem. We've built a set to show you how underfloor radiant works great for new construction and renovations. First, check the plans and locate your manifold either in a wall cavity or in a joist space. Manifolds must be accessible after the installation is complete. Secure your mounting brackets so there is room for the circuits and space between the return and supply manifolds to make your connections. Measure at least six inches from the perimeter and then use a chalk box to mark a line from the manifolds to the last joist bay. Mark a pencil line using a square and make an X in the middle of the joist. Repeat this step for all the joists. First, put on your safety glasses and then use a half inch right angle drill with a one and three quarter inch auger drill bit to drill holes in each joist. In our first example, we'll install Onyx, which goes in faster and easier than Epex because it's much more flexible. Check your Radiant Works printout to make sure you have the proper Onyx circuits for your zone. Drop a coil of Onyx on the unwinder directly under the manifold. Temporarily secure one end of the circuit near the manifolds. Leave extra length on each circuit until the manifolds are permanently mounted. Pull the onyx off the unwinder, make a loop, and push that loop through the holes to the last joist space. To secure radiant tubing underfloor, use this specially modified staple gun with an air source of at least 100 PSI. Wear safety glasses anytime you handle this tool. Make sure the stainless steel guide plate is the proper one for either onyx or epex tubing. Use only Watts radiant staples and load them like this. To use the extension arm on the staple gun, first disconnect the air and remove the lower bolt from the bracket. Then set the extension on the handle of the staple gun so the steel cable falls near the middle of the trigger. Tighten the bolt securely and then run the cable on top of the trigger and up to the set screw on the handle. Work out the excess cable around the trigger and secure the set screw. Point the gun in a safe direction and then connect the air hose. Test the gun on a short piece of tube to make sure it's operating properly. The staple over onyx should look like this. So be careful not to block the tube or puncture it with a staple. Epex requires a different plate and the staple over the tube should not come closer than an eighth of an inch to the top of the tube to prevent abrasion. Depending on the job site, there are three ways to staple up onyx. You can place a ladder under the joist space and staple every six to eight inches. Some contractors use drywall stilts to reach the subfloor and to move quickly down each bay. Depending on the ceiling height, the fastest and easiest way to staple onyx between joists is with the Watts radiant extension arm on a staple gun. When working overhead, push the stapler up tight against the tube and hold both ends of the stapler flat against the subfloor to get a good fit. In rooms with normal ceiling heights, 
the extension arm will speed up your installation. Because of high heat loss in this area, we're securing onyx on four inch centers with staples placed every six to eight inches. A good rule of thumb is to extend your banded area from the exterior wall, a distance equal to half the height of the ceiling in the room to be heated. If the banded area is perpendicular to the exposed wall, double the loop back on itself, creating an M pattern. Staple the onyx loop eight inches from the perimeter of the room to allow a full eight inches of insulation later on. When the first bay is complete, pull more onyx from the unwinder to create another loop. Complete each joist bay, working your way across the room back to the manifold. When the other end of the onyx falls off the unwinder, secure it to the other manifold. To reach a partially filled joist space, measure eight inches from the first line of holes and drill another set. Mount one end of the onyx to the manifold as before and pull through to reach an empty bay next to the partially filled bay. Drill a hole through the joist about eight inches from the last loop. Then pull through a short loop to fill the area to complete the zone. Here's an underview of the completed onyx staple up installation showing a filled joist space an M pattern for banding, and several bays with eight inch and four inch centers. EPEX can be installed in suspension or with heat emission plates. Our Radiant Works printout calls for EPEX on eight inch centers and this is typical. Mount your manifolds and drill joist holes as shown in the onyx example. Place a coil of PEX on the unwinder under the manifold. Pull off the free end and feed it through the holes to the last joist bay. Pull the tubing until the entire circuit is unwound. Secure the PEX temporarily at the manifold location, leaving extra to work with. If you plan to hold the EPEX with emission plates, first lay a bead of silicone down each channel to reduce the possibility of PEX expansion noises later on. Typically, the plates are secured with wood screws to the underfloor and they are not used where the tube bends to help prevent expansion noises. Remember to secure only one side of the emission plate to allow for expansion of the tube. If you plan to suspend the EPEX, mark points on 12 inch centers on a straight line using a measuring block. Use half inch wood screws to secure lockdown fasteners on your marks. In the last bay, Secure the PEX to the clips, but be careful not to exceed the appropriate bend radius. The light bulb shape for the turn works well here. When the first bay is complete, feed the free end of the loop back through the hole in the joist to the next bay and pull all the circuit through. Repeat the same steps as seen in the first joist bay, clipping the PEX into the lockdown fasteners. When running PEX under floor, Make sure you have plenty of room in each joist penetration so the tube doesn't rub during expansion and contraction. Some contractors install grommets or pipe insulation around the PEX on each hole to minimize PEX noises. As in the onyx example, remember to fill all the joist spaces. As you work, keep in mind the amount of tube needed to return to the manifolds. 